Hi guys, welcome to the Zero EV Quaif Limited Slip Differential Fitting for the Tesla Small Front and Small Rear Drive Unit. Uh, so as you can see here, we are removing the main bearings off with some bearing pullers. Now the bearings are actually different sizes, so make sure you don't mix them up when removing them. Um, I think the ring gear side is actually slightly long, larger. And just take care when removing them. Um, you don't drop them or damage them in any way because you'll be refitting these again later. As you can see here, there's the numbers for the bearings. Uh, and two, and you can pick these up for around, I think, £12 a bearing. Uh, then undo all the ring gear bolts. Uh, just fly around with the air ratchet to get them all off. Take a gentle hammer and just tap the ring gear off. Uh, and then this is refitting back onto the quaif new differential uh, using blue Loctite just to make sure they don't come off again and then torquing them all down. Uh, all torque settings can be found in the information tied up to this video. Now we're just putting the new differential in the fly press just to put the bearings on. They go on extremely easily. You may be able to knock them on um, with a copper hammer, but obviously putting them on with a fly press or a hydraulic press of any type will get them nice and square. Once again, just make sure you put the correct size bearing on the correct side, otherwise you'll have to pull them off again and refit. So there's a shim just there, as you can see, putting back in. Don't forget that shim. And then simply slot the diff into place. Uh, make sure, obviously, the cogs will line up on the other side, which you'll see now, as the oil pump is plastic. Uh, just as you can see there. Just make sure that that's all located correctly so you don't damage it. Uh, then apply some gearbox seal all the way around the edge, and then just smother it around. Uh, obviously, clean this beforehand with a blade, uh, just to make sure the old sealant is removed. Now we're applying grease here because those bearings can actually fall out. Um, as you put the box together you wouldn't know, so just pub that full of grease just to hold them all in place. And then that little cable just there is a temperature sensor for the motor. Um, so just make sure you pull that through as you're going. And everything should just slot together fairly straightforward as you can see. Uh, just give it a bit of a wiggle and a knock here and there to get it lined up and get it into place. Uh, as you can see the uh, split rings back on that now so put that back on just so it can pull back through uh, then basically put all the bolts back into the the casing finger tight do not tighten them up at this point as we need to fit the bearing back in as you can see now um, this bearing is going back in now it's a lot easier to get the drive unit to go together with it not in place uh, it should just push into place and simply tap it round with a punch um, the reason for not tightening the drive unit hearing uh, at this point is because there is a domed washer on the motor side which applies pressure to that area um, so by tapping it on now and then putting the split ring back in when you then tighten the casing up it will put pressure back onto that domed washer keeping everything nice and tight As you can see the split rings now back in, so we're just tapping it into place nice and gently. So now going around and just talking up all the gearbox casing bolts. Uh, there's quite a lot of these bolts and there's a couple of hidden ones, so just make sure you don't miss any as you're, uh, you're working your way around. And obviously double check you've done the ones that are in the inverter side, because you don't want to be taking the inverter back off again if you've forgotten a bolt. And then put the secondary split ring back on, as you can see here. And then the encoder actually, this encoder wheel here actually goes back onto that location. Uh, when taking it apart we did think it was one piece, but it does actually pull off. Um, best thing is to take a slide hammer with a little hook on the end and put it in each of those little holes and just gradually work your way around very gently with a slide hammer. 
until it comes free. Um, but just heat it up to interference fitting and then slot it back over and just gently tap it in. Um, be quite gentle with it as obviously you cannot get replacement ones of these yet. Um, so tap it into place and then work your way around with a punch just to locate it in. Now the bearing we put on beneath that encoder, uh, when you're taking it apart, you don't need to remove it at that point. You can go on and take everything apart and then remove it afterwards. So here we're putting the covers back on, which is actually, uh, there's O-rings and seals in there to stop the gearbox oil coming into the inverter side. So make sure that's very clean uh, and probably put some rubber lube on them, which is the red stuff you can see. Uh, and then tighten that back down, which I said all the torque settings will be in the description. and then put the encoder cover back on. Um, when removing the inverter, you need to unplug the temperature sensor and the encoder sensor as you remove the inverter cover off. Don't just think you can pull the cover off, otherwise you will damage those connections. Um, it's not too bad to, to remove and take apart. Um, just follow this guide in reverse. Um, and if you guys have any issues or have any questions, please put a comment in the uh, comment section on the video. Uh, please like, share and follow. Uh, would be appreciated and we'll keep you up to date on new Tesla parts coming along in the future.